This bike is a really important bike. It is arguably the first ever carbon fiber frame bike. It's the first ever aero bike frame. And strangely perhaps, this is also the start of the legendary clothing brand, Assos. Let me explain. So the founder of Assos, Tony Meyer, was the importer of Shimano into Switzerland back in the 70s and very well connected in Swiss cycling. And in conversation with some other cycling friends, they began to talk about aerodynamics. It was already really big news in skiing and in motorsport, but not really in cycling. So with the seeds of inspiration sown, Meyer set to work. Now there are of course two parts to this frame then. Firstly, the carbon fiber. Now Maya knew this was a wonder material that could be manipulated into all sorts of complex shapes, but actually sourcing it, particularly during the Cold War, was tough. And he ended up having to sign a form apparently from the US Department of Defense, promising that he wouldn't either make weapons or sell anything to the Russians. But then, not just sourcing the material, but also finding someone who knew how to work with it was tough. And he ended up having to settle for someone that was a fiberglass expert and then going from there. Now, I must admit, when I looked at this first, I was really confused as to actually how it was put together because modern carbon frames are generally made in two ways. So either they have individual layers of carbon fiber that are laid up in a mold and then baked under pressure. So that gives you the kind of organic flowing lines that we're really familiar with now. But you can also get a lug technique. So that's where you get a carbon tube that is then bonded, so glued into a lug. And then sometimes you might get a couple of layers of carbon fiber wrapped over the top and then that'll be stuck in a vacuum packed bag and then baked in another. Now, absolutely oversimplification perhaps of the processes, but hopefully you get the idea. Here though, I was, as I say, confused. There was not much sign of anything, but it turns out from talking to Maya that actually it is lugged, but the lugs are internal. So all the tube junctions have a steel socket and then the tube goes over the top and is bonded into place. And actually, when I looked closer, you can see quite clearly how it is constructed at the seat clamp area there. He had, he said, no idea how strong this bike would be. But here it is, what, 41 years later, with numerous track titles under its belt, under some absolute monster riders, and it is still standing. So probably pretty strong then, I'd guess. Not light, that was never the priority. And unfortunately, I don't have any scales for you, but my internal calibration system detects that it might be about seven kilos. Let's talk about the second aspect of this frame, then, the aerodynamics. So Meyer contacted a professor of aerodynamics based in Zurich, and with his help, they made all the relevant tube sections into teardrop profiles. So that's kind of the most aerodynamic shape that you can get. You'll notice that all the tube profiles are pretty modestly sized compared to today's bikes, but no doubt this would have been quite jarring to anyone used to those skinny steel tubes of the 70s. Crucially though, it did perform significantly better in the wind tunnel. But the frame isn't actually the only aerodynamic part on this bike. Come and have a look closely at these wheels. So these are actually Assos rims, and they're the first ever aerodynamic profiled rims. So apparently, Maya was saying that they had real problems with the durability of aluminium rims back in the 70s. And so he set out to create his own. And whilst he did so, he also wanted to make them aerodynamic. And so what he did was he contacted a aluminium company in Switzerland to get the right alloy. Then also he reinforced the areas around the spoke nipples. So that was the main problem with the rims at the time. They are super narrow, just about 16 millimeters wide. But that of course is in keeping with the tyres at the time. Now I'd love to tell you what they were, but I can't inflate them unfortunately. But nevertheless, for a track bike, skinny was definitely the way to go. Right, lastly then, let's turn our attention to these handlebars, shall we? Neatly attached to the fork crown and beautifully made out of carbon fibre. Now the reason they're there is because of the first time this bike went into the wind tunnel and it performed really, really well. But unfortunately, everything went wrong when a rider was added into the mix. Now we know now that a rider is the cause of most of the aerodynamic drag, but at the time it was kind of a little bit disappointing. But 
undeterred, or rather deterred for a small amount of time until they had a stiff drink, at which point they went back and started tweaking the ride positions. So a tucked in elbow here and a dropped head there until eventually the brainwave hit that they would drop the bars to give the rider a great position. And actually, given that aero bars hadn't been invented yet, the position that you get on this bike is pretty mint. Now, it was at this point here that Meyer then also turned his attention to clothing. So wool was the material of choice at the time, and that was not very aerodynamic. And so he went with Lycra. Now, technically, though, that wasn't actually his first ever item of clothing that he dreamt up. The first was a winter riding skin suit, which, in his words, said that you could ride with Switzerland on the outside, but feel like you had the Cote d'Azur on the inside, which I think is kind of cool. I'd sign up. Unfortunately, though, for Meyer's bike, it was just too expensive. So apparently it cost 50,000 Swiss francs to develop each one. So there wasn't really much of a business case for making that into an ongoing concern. However, skin suits and the Lycra shorts were selling like hotcakes. And therefore, that was the direction that ASOS went in. Kind of a cool story, I think. Right, do make sure you give this bike a big thumbs up, not only because it looks so cool, but also because it was something of a trailblazer. And then after you've done that, please make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe. It's completely free. And then if you want some more content, well, why not check out a modern day aero bike from Team BMC, actually sponsored by ASOS, it has to be said. That one is just down there. Or to see how you could get more aero with some tips from the wind tunnel, click just down there.